Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tech Motoring. On today's episode, we're going to be reviewing this. This is the CG Sulit SC630 OBD2 scan tool for your vehicle. And it does a lot more than just read and clear check engine lights. And we're going to dive into that in just a minute. So hit that subscribe button and stay tuned because we'll be right back. All right, everybody, well, welcome back. So like I was saying, CG Sulit reached out to me to review this product for them. Now, this is their SC630 model. Now, they have a lot of different models to do a lot of different things. But this model in particular is for, uh, well, obviously, check engine lights, clearing those check engine light codes, but it also is advertised as an ABS and airbag reset tool, which should be very handy for those individuals who have an ABS light on their dashboard or an airbag error that they need to fix or clear or at least read and figure out what's going on with it. So this tool is good for those specific things, but if you're looking for a tool that just reads check engine lights and actually just clears those or at least gives you an idea of what the check engine light is this tool will do that and it will do it very well so first thing let's get into the box take a look at the product the packaging see what they send us with this product and see what they claim on the box and then we'll go ahead and we'll plug this into a car and see how well it works so let's look at the product first because that is very important. So let's open this up and see what we have. Pretty nice box, by the way, uh, just a cardboard box, but nice, colorful, has a picture of the scanner on the front. Um, on the back, it does have the features and benefits, which is really nice. Um, and it, I'll go over a couple of them real quick, just so you have an idea of exactly what this tool is designed for. So it does say it provides accurate and professional diagnosis of ABS, SRS, and SAS systems. So ABS is obviously your braking system in your vehicle. Your SRS is your airbag system, and your SAS is your steering angle sensor. So that's for the steering aspect. So it does more than just ABS and airbag, like it says. It actually is for steering angle sensors as well, which is really nice. Now it says that the ABS and airbag coverage includes 58 vehicle makes. It says the steering angle sensor calibration on more than 41 vehicle makes. Uh, identifies cars quickly and easily with a one key VIN reading, which means it can read the VIN number from your vehicle and immediately know which vehicle that you're plugged into. So this way it knows exactly what sensors it's looking for based on that VIN number. Full OBD2 functions, read and clear codes like I was mentioning before. You can view live data. Uh, vehicle information, IM readiness status, and O2 monitor test. So that's pretty nice as well. So sometimes you need to know if the system in your vehicle is actually at a ready state. For those of you who live in states where you have to get your vehicle inspected every so many years, that's kind of a big thing because if you just recently had a code cleared or if you recently had uh, service under your vehicle to turn off a check engine light, sometimes those uh, systems are not ready for at least, you know, 100 miles or so on, depending on the vehicle and what exactly was changed. So this is a nice tool to be able to check that uh, before you go to your inspection, because depending on your state, some states require that all the systems must be ready before you can pass inspection. So if you get your car fixed yesterday and you go to the inspection today, this might show up as, oh, well, the car's not ready. This system is not ready. So you may not pass inspection. So if you had a tool like this, you could just check them real quick and say, okay, yeah, all my systems are good. I'm gonna go to inspection and get my car done because I know it's clear. And it does a lifetime free updates through USB cable. And I'll point out to that in a little bit where that comes into play. Um, so that's pretty nice is that it does have updates that you can update the scanner with the newest uh, vehicles. But anyway, let's get into the box here and take a look. So we take it out of the box and it comes in this really nice carrying case here with this handle. Um, that's kind of nice because, you know, these things are sort of sensitive in a way. You don't want these just thrown around anywhere. Uh, having a nice case is nice to transport this if you happen to have to go out on the road and um, you wanted to take this with you just in case you know, having that case is really nice. So let's get into the case now and see what we have. So we do have the scanner right here. So this is the CG Sulit SC630 scan tool ABS airbag uh, diagnostic reset tool. Uh, pretty nice. It is, it's all plastic. There's no rubber around it. So 
I would be a little hesitant to uh, drop this onto a you know concrete floor or something. I don't know how well this plastic is going to hold up. It's nice to have the carrying case with it as well, so this way you're not just throwing this around your garage or something. Uh, it does have some nice buttons here. It's they got a nice solid click to them, which is nice, so this way you know, especially when you're working on a car that's running, sometimes it's hard to tell if you click the button or not. That's a pretty good solid click. Um, so that's pretty nice, I like that. All right, let's put that down. Let's see what's on this side here. It looks like we got uh, an instruction manual here or at least some sort of um, manual with the warranty information here. It is a one year limited warranty from CG Sulit on this product. Basically just going down the buttons, what the buttons do, what those are pretty self-explanatory, especially once you get in there, showing you about the menu system and everything, which is really nice. Um, it does appear to be a color screen which is really nice. This is a 2.8 inch uh, color display, which is kind of nice. I uh, remember the old school scanners back, you know, 20 years ago, they would just be that, you know, two color screen, basically just the black and the, the yellow background or whatever. But at least this is nice to show a nice color screen on these now. This is the USB cable. So it just looks like a mini USB cable here. Nothing special that plugs into this side port right here on the scanner. So that's how you interface with a computer to do the updates. Now I have not tried that procedure yet, but I am curious about it. And maybe I'll make another video about how to do those updates. So we'll take a look at that in the future. And in this bag right here is obviously the OBD2 interface cable. So obviously you have your OBD2 side that plugs into your vehicle and then the other side, which obviously plugs into the scanner, plugs into the bottom of the scanner, which is kind of nice. So this way, you know, you don't have a cable running out the top of your scanner, but yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay. So without being able to turn it on or look at it, this is a pretty nice package, especially for the price that they're asking for this. Scanners back in the day used to be well over two, three, four hundred dollars for a decent scanner that would just read, you know, check engine lights and clear check engine codes. This is now doing a lot more for a lot less money. So that's cool, but that's technology, right? And that's what this channel is all about. It's about cars and technology and how much they've changed over the years. So this is a prime example of one of those things is being able to run your own diagnostics and your own, you know, reset tools, ABS and airbag reset tools. That is really, really cool because back in the day, you used to have to buy these very specialized, expensive scanners to do, you know, ABS and airbag and SRS and SAS. And, you know, that was something a lot more complicated of a, of a tool you needed to buy for those. So that's really cool to see that. Now that we've seen the scanner and I'm pretty impressed with how this looks so far and it's nice and lightweight, which is good. It has a pretty decent grip to it. A little rubberized texture would have been nice just on, at least on the area where you have to hold it. Um, this way it doesn't, you know, slip out of your hands. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think it's really good. So let's get this packed up. Let's bring this down to the garage and let's take a look at how well it performs. All right, everybody, well, now that we're out here in the garage with the vehicle, we've got the scanner plugged into the vehicle just in the OBD2 port that's just about here underneath the dashboard. Sometimes they can be just behind a little panel right here like this vehicle, but normally they're located just underneath your dashboard on the driver's side of your vehicle. So we got the scanner plugged in. Now keep in mind, you just wanna keep the car in the on position. You don't actually need to start the vehicle, just in the on position with your key. Uh, we got the scanner plugged in right now. We are ready to start using it. So let's dive in and see what this is capable of. All right, so as you can see here, we have the main menu, which gives us a couple of different things here. So first thing we have is history. We have auto VIN, which will allow us to automatically uh, search for the VIN of the vehicle through the OBD2 port. So this is a really nice tool so you don't have to manually type it in. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but it does work a majority of the time. And as you can see, there is an option to manually input the VIN anyway. Moving on to the next one, we have OBD2. This is just your typical uh, auto scan for OBD2 code. So we'll go through that in just a little bit. We have our SAS, so this is our steering angle sensor menu where we can go in and uh, take a look at some of the diagnostics or codes for that and actually help clear those out of the system. Of course, we have our ABS and airbag settings as well, which we can go in and reset those if we need to. We have our settings menu, which we can go into. 
And in this menu here, you'll see that we have options as such as language, uh, units of measurement. So here you can change it between, you know, metric and imperial settings, shortcuts, which are actually just these F1, F2, F3. So you can actually make shortcuts for those three uh, buttons right down here, F1, 2, and 3. And that's kind of nice to have that ability to have shortcuts just like that. So really nice. So here we have display test, which means we could test our display of our unit just in case we think there's any issues with it. Keypad test, same thing, but for the keypad itself. And of course we have the about menu, which tells us a little bit about the scanner. Back to the main menu, we go down to the bottom, we have data manager and we have update, which we can update these using a uh, program online, which will allow us to update these scanners with more functionality, which maybe later on I'll do a video on how to actually update these scanners. So just before we get into the actual scanning of the vehicle, I wanted to go over a couple things, which is the keypad. So we do have the four direction buttons here, up, down, left, and right. And the button in the middle, which you would think would be select, is actually a question mark. It brings up help menus, depending on which menu you're in on the scanner. Yes is pretty much the accept and go forward button, and N is pretty much the uh, go back or, you know, no basically answer for depending on what screen you're on. And then of course the F1, F2, F3 shortcuts like we mentioned before. Let's get into the scanner and see what this is capable of doing. So let's go to auto VIN. And we're gonna hit the Y button to select. And it's gonna say, do we wanna manually input the VIN or do we wanna automatically uh, have it find the VIN? So let's see if on this cart it can actually find the VIN. So as it's here trying to uh, acquire the VIN from the vehicle, I will say that this is a 2017 Hyundai Ionic Electric. This is actually an EV and quite an uncommon EV at that because it wasn't really built for uh, very many years and it wasn't uh, you know a very common car around the whole entire United States. All right, so as we can see, it actually says VIN acquisition failed. Please input the VIN number. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, hit the OK there, which in this case is F3. And it's gonna tell us to input the VIN. So we're gonna say we need the keyboard. And here we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the VIN number in there and then we'll see what it finds. All right, so there we go. We manually entered the VIN into the scanning unit now. And as you could see, it very clearly says this is an Ionic Electric EV. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that Y button to select. This is the engine type. It's an 88 kilowatt electric motor on this vehicle. So that's correct. Uh, it's gonna ask us what area. So what country was the vehicle uh, you know, used in or, or purchased in? And then here you can see that it just wants you to confirm that, which we can go over to yes. And here it's saying this is the different types of modules that uh, we can actually have access to and look at. So we have the airbag module, uh, the electric parking brake, which is kind of cool, uh, electronic stability program, active hydraulic booster, the smart cruise control autonomous emergency braking system as well. So that's really neat how we can get information from all those systems. So for instance, let's just go into electric parking brake real quick. And from here, we can get some data about that. So we can read codes, we can do an active test, which is really cool. And see here, we, we can do an actuator control for applying and releasing the brake. Now, right now, the brake is actually, it's off. So if I want to apply the brake, I can hit apply and say, okay, start. And you can hear the brake actually just engaged on the vehicle. Pretty cool, and it says right here that it's succeeded. So now what we could do is we can go back and we could say, oh, I wanna release that parking brake. Same process, and okay, and start. And there we go, brake actually just released itself now. So it's pretty neat how you can control those systems in the vehicle uh, with this scanner, basically. So we'll go back to the main menu here and we can go to uh, a different selection here. So let's go to the OBD2 real quick. And we'll do an auto scan. And now it's gonna go through the different methods. And here it says that it did not find any uh, check engine lights here. Uh, no codes are found. And we can also go into the ABS and airbag menu, choose our region here. And as long as you have one of these makes of vehicle, you can look into your 
airbag and ABS information on your vehicle. That's pretty neat. All right, so overall, I have to say my impressions of the scanner are actually really, really good. I think CG Sulit has a really good scanner for its price. I think that it's a, it's a nice product to have if you're a car enthusiast, if you work on your own cars, uh, especially in this case where it has the ABS and airbag functionality, the SAS functionality. Um, if that is the type of work that you do uh, for yourself, then I think this is an investment to save a lot of money for yourself in the long run. So I think CG Sulit did a fantastic job on getting this scanner to be easy, priced correctly, and also look really good and function very well. Thank you very much for sending me this scanner for review. And uh, I would say that I would recommend using this scanner if you have that purpose. Even if you wanted a scanner for just basic check engine lights or whatever, I still think this is a fantastic product to use. And for the price, once again, the prices of these things have dropped significantly over the past decade. And now you get a really, really good scanner that does a lot of you know, functionality with your vehicle for a lot less. So really, really nice. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. Make sure you check us out on our website, techmotoring.com, on Facebook, facebook.com slash techmotoring, on Twitter, at techmotoring. I'd like to thank you very much again for watching today's episode. And remember, welcome to the future and welcome to Tech Motoring. And we'll see you on the next episode.